Hey guys, welcome to the Red Rocks to Mountaintops Adventure Ride. So this ride is one that we've been wanting to put together for a long time. We love Moab, we love the Red Rocks of Moab, and we also love the high alpine passes of Colorado. You know, the area around Telluride, Uray. And so to put these all together in one big ride, you know, we've kind of, we've played with the time of year, we've played with different routes. We even did some scouting down in the Four Corners area, even dropped into New Mexico for a minute. And we've decided that, you know, this up here is a good solid route. So once again, we're, we're starting in Moab. We're heading over to Colorado. It's about 800 miles all the way back around, back around into southeastern Utah, and then back up into Moab. It's a four to five day ride. We're showing you the four day version. So some other things you're gonna want to know about this ride is the time of year to do it. Because you've got the desert, it's super hot in the desert in the summer, but yet the snow might not be melted off the high passes. So September, September is a great time to do this. You get too far into October, you're gonna get into snowstorms. Um, so the bikes, the bikes you're gonna wanna do this on, we, of course, if you guys are watching this, you know, 690s, 701s, we're even spending some time on the 790 on this. You can absolutely do this, this ride on bigger bikes, uh, the 1090s, 1190s, but the small bikes are great as well. You know, the 450Ls, all those bikes are, are great, but you're gonna want them set up. You're gonna want some pretty aggressive tires on them. You're gonna want some skid plates um, and the skill level. You know, you as a rider needs to be a pretty decent rider. This is one of the harder ones that we've, we've put together, um, but it's, we've got quite a few al alternate routes. You know, if you're on a bigger bike, you're probably just gonna be taking the easy, you know, the easy alternates. Um, but if you're feeling spunky, absolutely hit that harder stuff because it's, it's terrain that you're not gonna see anywhere else. And the last and one of the most important things to check out is our blog, RM Rider Exchange, the link to the blog is gonna be in the description of this video. You're gonna to wanna to make sure and check that out because it's gonna have all your GPS routes. It's gonna have the complete video series that shows each day and what, and what we're doing. It's gonna have a ton more information on the route and what to expect so you can get out there and plan this ride for yourself. With that being said, this is the Red Rocks to Mountaintops Adventure Ride. Frozen. on this really cold ride, freezing cold ride, and my bakalaka thing was just a small nylon thin thing. I needed a thick one, and it was just freezing cold, and the wind found a little hole. It was like an ice pit, just a hole. Like, grr, 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 it was freezing, and these guys don't stop. And... Did you get yourself a new bakalaka? Yeah, I got a new bakalaka. No case <laughs> system, now you can tell them, see? <laughs> All right, guys, we're ready to go. We got our route all buttoned up. We, uh, we decided on a route. I think it's gonna be a great time. Um, there's nine of us going on this ride. And so we try to, you know, all get together because that's part of it, right? Is talking to each other and getting to know each other and telling stories and all that. So we got all of our, our bikes loaded. And, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. You come out and everybody's kind of checking out each other's setup and, there are their tires new enough you know they have flat tires what can we help them with right at the last second because we don't want to get out on the trail and have problems but anyway so first thing we're going to do is we're going to run down and uh stop by the flying monkey rally jesse kimmel puts on a great rally down there we uh we like to hang out with those guys we're going to go cook and breakfast tomorrow morning and then we're going to shoot over to moab and take off from there While you guys are eating, before we start the raffle, I did. I have that in the back of my head. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it.
Good morning from Moab. We like to stage out of house rentals because it's super nice to get the bikes loaded the night before and have a garage to lock them in. It makes getting rolling the next morning nice and smooth. Before we head to town for some fuel, let me introduce the great guys on our ride. First, we've got Dan, who's the owner and founder of Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and he's super talented on his 690, you know, for an old guy. Ray is the GM here at Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and he has some of the best jokes and hot sauce around. Also, if you ever need to lift a bike, Ray is a good guy to have around. Troy has an incredible talent on two wheels, and those skills have taken him all over the nation as a famous rodeo clown. Shane is an all-star photographer that isn't afraid to pin it when the occasion calls for it, or when there's some peer pressure. Josh is one of our veteran video guys. You will see his handiwork on some of our previous adventure rides. He seems to always be there to get the shot, even when you don't want him to. Scotty is a total character. There is never a dull moment with him. Even though Troy is the actual clown in the group, Scotty is a close second. Gary is a staple member of our adventure rides and is an old friend of Rocky Mountain. He's quiet, calm, and has sneaky good skills on a bike. Justin heads up our brands department and is another veteran of our adventures and basically started our YouTube channel. Justin has skills to spare on an adventure bike. Mick is Justin's bro, hence the nickname. And even though Mick only weighs about 130 pounds, he can more than handle the weight of his trusted old KLR. And then there's me. I don't talk about myself often, but when I do, I still don't say much. I love ADV and I'm excited to have you guys following along with us. Now, back to the ride. Our first stop before we head out is always hitting the gas station to fill up all the tanks and get any last minute snacks or drinks. Adventure's first stop, we're at Maverick. <laughs> now, we're finally about ready to roll. Our first section of the ride is Moab to Gateway. We head north out of Moab and follow along the Colorado River up to Castle Valley. It makes me a little sad because we are leaving the Red Rock behind for a couple days. We stretch our legs along Castle Valley and then quickly climb up and over the LaSalle Mountains where the scenery changes dramatically. I swear I saw a Wolverine on this road a couple years ago. So much so that I actually looked it up and turns out there has been Wolverine sightings on the LaSalle's. After we group back together at the Bull Canyon Overlook, we then get back on the road where we hit dirt for the first time. drop and drop quickly down into Gateway, Colorado. This is where we cross the Dolores River for the first time and stop at the gas station for the bikes with sub 200 mile range. It's around 185 miles from Moab to Telluride if you don't stop. There's only one gas station in Gateway so you can't miss it. With the small bikes topped off, we head into our next section of the ride which goes from Gateway to Telluride. It's a quick ride down the road that back to the dirt. We call this section the Ridge Road.
After a little loose gravel section at the bottom, we once again climb quickly and the views are breathtaking. This is a long section of dirt and you'll want to bring something for lunch on the trail. After a quick break and lunch in the shade, we're looking forward to what the next section will hold. Last year when we came through this section, there had been a fire roll through here and the landscape was a bit surreal. It actually got stranger as we climbed up onto the mesa. There were still logs burning and smoldering. There were firefighters sitting in their truck monitoring the situation and they just waved us by. As we continued down the road, they were actively backburning an area and there was big flames and smoke and flashing lights and everyone was just waving us by. In contrast from last year, it's cool to see that the forest is already starting to rebound. Now there's sunflowers coming up and the bushes getting their leaves back. When you get up on top, the road really opens up and you can make pretty good time. Or just take it easy and enjoy the tall aspen and pines. This is one of my favorite parts of the ride because I'm always looking forward to seeing the San Juan mountain range on the Uncompagre National Forest come into view because I absolutely love this area of Colorado. We hit pavement just above Ridgeway. If you want to call it a day at this point, it's just a short 15 mile ride on pavement down to Ridgeway and over to Uray, our ultimate destination for the night. We are often accused of being leather asses and we try to pack as much scenery into every day as we can. Staying true to form, we head over towards Telluride for the trip over Imogene Pass. This little pavement section up to Telluride has some great views. There's a ton more cars, but the view is absolutely worth it. We all need a little gas to get us up and over Imogene Pass. You won't need a full tank by any means, and a little less weight isn't a bad thing for the road to come. Telluride is definitely a cool little town, and for me it's always a little tough to find the right street that takes you to the start of the dirt. You know, this trail climbs extremely fast and there's a ton of exposure. So it's definitely another one of those roads that you really want to look around, but the trail definitely demands your attention.
Most of these roads were developed from trails built by miners back in the 1800s. These guys were nuts. They were definitely not afraid of heights. Our first stop is normally the old Tomboy mine site. It's the edge of a hanging valley high above Telluride. Gold was the main ore they were after. We always stop and explore a little. You're definitely going to want to watch for nails. Now my recommendation is to definitely check out the blog. There's also a lot of research you can do on your own and really learn about this area and why these miners were all the way up here on top of this mountain. It seems like we always have a little carnage from here to the top of the pass. It's deceiving how steep the road is. We've had some crashes, <laughs> burnt beyond saving clutches, flats, broken parts, and did I say flats? Scotty did some irreparable harm to his rear brake lever right here, but more on that later. Well, as Scotty was having his problem, remember what I said about flats? One thing I want to point out though, how long have we been adventure riding, Eric? Uh, a long 10, time. 10, 12 Ten, years? Probably. This is my very first flat tire dual sport riding. I've fixed a lot, but this is the first one of mine I've had. Wow! Yeah. That's, That's impressive. Crazy. Hey, you want to wedge some rocks under there to get that tire up? Sure. Oh. Okay, let's try it. Wait up there. You got some lines, you know? Here, let me take my luggage off. It's actually Justin should be talking about the crew. Got me, you know, last year we had a couple wrecks on that hill and right up here. Charles had a flat. Yep. This year it's my turn. You're that guy this there's year. There's a lot of nails, a lot of old structures, so there's tons of nails and stuff around here. Definitely. I'm guessing that's what got me. Because I didn't hit anything hard. And I'm off. Sweet. Pretty slick. Not too bad. Just like that. No, it's off the rock. There we go. <laughs> See, on Saturday night when I put my dress on. There we go. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Wait, Sorry I had my sweatshirt on. Ah, thanks, guys. That is Eric's like, I got a flat, turn around. You don't want to see it in front of me. I don't have to say that. It ripped the air headphone out, so I couldn't hear anybody else. Well, then I'm pissed. I'm like, I lift it up. I'm like, look, he's not even talking. Do you need some help? So we found the nail. I'm just cutting the knob a little bit to get access to the head so Troy can pull it out, maybe. It's kind of bent, so. Hey, we got it. Show him yeah. what you got. That's a weird looking now. It doesn't even look like an old mine now. All buttoned back up and on our way. Of course it's getting dark. I guess we like to watch the sun go down when we're at 13,000 feet. It's always more adventure. This is what Colorado was all about. It's just breathtaking. Make sure you bring a sticker for the mailbox at the summit. Dropping off the summit towards Uray is beautiful and it's definitely an exercise in brake management. If we wouldn't have had a couple issues on the way up, we would have had enough daylight to see the scenery on the way down.
there's an absolutely cool waterfall along this road that's definitely worth checking out if you make it in the daylight. At the end of the day, we rolled into a cool little town called Uray. Grab a well-deserved dinner and then off to the cabin. Uray has several motels to choose from and natural hot springs all around town. If you had an extra day, there are plenty of things to see and plenty of Jeep roads to explore. We will hit a couple of our favorites throughout the next two days. Make sure to subscribe and follow along for day two, where we have problems with the bikes and head over several high mountain passes. Also, don't forget to check out the blog.